Okay, this video is called Are Drugs a Joke? And this is a painting here of Copernicus, the Polish astronomer. He's also a priest, a Catholic. This painting is by Jan Mateko, the Polish artist. And the point of it is, a Copernican moment or a Copernican inversion is when one sees something from a totally new way. Instead of seeing the Earth is in the center of the universe, he saw that the Sun was in the center of the universe. And it relates also to medicine. The way medical students are trained in the United States, they're basically told that pharmacology is the center of medicine. You basically learn, you know, pathophysiology, you learn pharmacology because that's what medicine's all about. You match the ill to the pill and send a bill. Okay, and a Copernican inversion would be to realize the vast majority of diseases are due to diet and toxins. So nutrition and toxicology should really be the center of medicine, but they're not. As a matter of fact, it's a giant blind spot, gaping hole in the knowledge of the vast majority of conventionally trained physicians. They really don't know anything about it, and it kind of makes them sad. The reason I say that is... They worked all these years through college, through med school, through residency. They really want to help people. You know, they all go into it, almost all of them, the majority of them, because they want to help people when they start out as they're young. And then they start getting kind of sad and frustrated because they realize they study, 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 but they're not learning anything. You can talk to senior medical students and they won't know almost anything about common diseases, almost anything useful. And then you talk to somebody after they finish an internal medicine residency. They'll know all the drugs, they'll know all the protocols, all the billing codes, how you manage a patient to get paid and you know to stay out of trouble by following the codes, but they won't know what causes hypertension, what causes diabetes, what causes obesity, what causes arthritis, what causes inflammation, what causes autoimmune disease. I could tell you this stuff. Just watch a couple of my videos. It's all, most of the stuff is pretty well known, actually. But it never gets taught to uh, medical students. Uh, so anyways, okay, we gotta, let's go to the next slide here. So this talk is our drugs a joke. And like I said, all these diseases in conventional medicine are called chronic. Obesity, hypertension, diabetes, coronary artery disease, arthritis. And they're called chronic because you can never cure these diseases with a drug. Never. What number of patients are cured of diabetes or hypertension with a drug? Zero. And these are like the most common diseases, coronary artery disease. Zero. Okay. Um, you know, you can reduce the risk of myocardial infarction with a statin medication, for example, for atherosclerosis, but you'll often have the increased risk of other side effects. The typical scenario is that the textbook will say, no one knows what's the cause of this disease. Um, like for hypertension, they'll say 90 to 95% is essential hypertension of unknown cause. They'll give some simple-minded explanation of atherosclerosis being a primarily a cholesterol thing. And cholesterol is a major part of it, but those, those explanations are really a joke compared to atherothrombosis theory and understanding blood viscosity and hemorrheology. Okay, for diabetes, you know, you'll never see it in any medical book or any biochemistry book. Uh, that's used by medical students in all the major universities, that it's primarily due to, you know, eating excessive dietary fat, especially saturated fat. It's pretty obvious. Inflammation, especially from uh, eating meat and those types of products. Processed foods also cause problems. But anyways, um, students are just taught mass yield of the pill, send a bill. Um, but then when you start reading about nutrition, this is one of the things I was so amazed by this. All these patients, you get tons and tons of patients are cured with no side effects. Um, for hypertension, obesity, diabetes, coronary artery disease, um, because these are dietary diseases and you optimize the diet and you'll routinely cure many of these diseases and help with many of the other ones. You know, you help prevent leaky gut. You got a good chance to really help these autoimmune patients. Um, you tone down the inflammation by getting rid of the processed food and the meat. You often help tremendously for these arthritis patients. Same diet improves blood flow, which often helps with neuropathy, including diabetic neuropathy. It'll often reverse impotence. Not always. If the arteries are fully occluded, you're not going to bring back the Johnson. But if they're just narrowed, stenosed is the medical word, you'll often improve uh, erectile function. Okay. Um, drugs routinely have negative side effects. That can be expected. Um, the low-fat, low-sodium, whole food vegan diet usually has positive side effects, optimizing body weight, improving blood flow to other areas of the body. And the reason I, I, I came up with this title, like Drugs a Joke, is because most of the time when I talk to relatives or I talk to friends or I talk to patients, when you talk about nutrition, they give you a look like, are you f full of nonsense? You know, they think nutrition is a joke. You know, the smarter ones and the ones who've done a little bit of reading on their own, they get it. But 
most people, especially the first time around, they don't get it. And then they think, you know, surgery and drugs, wow, that's real medicine. But they almost never work. I mean, they work when you're replacing something. Somebody's hypothyroid, you give them thyroid hormone, they'll get restored thyroid function. If somebody's hypogonadism, you know, low testosterone, you give them testosterone, they'll go up. But, you know, the problem with that is you don't want to be taking, you know, let's say anabolic steroids uh, randomly. I think that's a mistake because you suppress the body's own production of it and you potentially cause a whole bunch of other problems. Uh, but what I'm trying to say is these deficiency diseases, they're rare versus all the stuff of excess, excess of dietary fat, animal protein, caffeine, preservatives, all this stuff, and the herbicides. Those are super common. The vast majority of patients have these chronic diseases. Okay, here's some quotes from Socrates, the great Greek philosopher. The purpose of philosophy is to determine how we ought to live. Useful knowledge helps us to live a better diet, a better life. In order to decide how to live well, we should try to learn what is good for us and what is bad for us. So we'll do the things that are good, we'll avoid the things that are bad. That is simple common sense, and you'll get lots of that from Socrates and from Aristotle, and that type of thinking should apply to medicine. Starch is good for you. Fruits and vegetables are good for you. Most other foods are not, okay? Um, all right, so anyways, uh, understanding that you're probably not gonna fix your problem with a drug is useful to know because it's a motivator that one should try to, okay, one should try to learn about this other stuff. Dietary diseases are fixed by improving diet and by avoiding toxins. And there's lots of toxins in food. So the good news is this is all doable, but you have to realize it's gonna depend on you. Your doctor probably won't know this stuff. And a lot of people say, oh, they're confused. There's so much contradicting information on the internet. Well, you decide for yourself you know, how, what path you wanna go. But here's the advice I would give. I study this stuff pretty extensively. McDougall's got, he's the best in nutrition doctors. I've studied all of them that I'm aware of pretty extensively. I try to give you the best possible information I can give you. And I actually think I'm pretty complimentary to McDougall. McDougall's good, solid, old school history, epidemiology, experience with, you know, Kempner, Burkett, et cetera. That's all great. And Pritikin is great. And Chef Agee. And there's a lot of other really good ones out there. Okay. And then I'll just tend to give you more detail about the biochemical mechanisms, the molecular biology behind it. And then you're going to say, oh, well, what about these other you know, good nutrition doctors that contradict this information. Well, I would disagree with them. I mean, and you know, I'm not selling you anything. I got nothing to sell. I'm just trying to make a great site and you know, make a great achievement here. I got this, all this conventional medicine only takes an IQ for me about 130. I got lots and lots of IQ left over after that that I want to use to do something good. Okay, I like writing books, but nobody reads books, so I'm making this YouTube channel. So, anyways, we're trying to help you. And um, also, I think Christian mentality, or at least the Christian ethics, Bible, biblical ethics, man is created in the image of God, therefore, as um, part divine. You need that, because otherwise, everything gets run by big pharma with the idea that, you know, you're just a talking primate, no loyalty to you, loyalty is the stockholders to make money, and once you go down that path, it's hard to fix anything. So, if you get this, that the drugs are probably not gonna fix your problem, because it's probably diet and toxicology, you can search that out, this is where you're going to end up, where we talk, and you got a good chance to improve. So that's how it usually goes, if that's what it really is, and that's what it most often is. So, And if you catch it, the sooner the better. So anyways, hope that helps.